All that disappeared during the SOP years. Demand was high, but the workforce was flooded. More and more soldiers were willing to work for cheap. It got so you'd have to work years before you could even pay back your initial training and insurance fees. Yeah, I can see Sundowner's point. Uh, the global recession certainly didn't help. Unemployment shot up across the US and the EU. Even if contractors gave up and packed it in, there weren't any jobs waiting for them back home. The irony is the recovery was all war-driven. It wasn't a general recovery at all. Not only did globalization exploit the poor countries, but it crippled first world employment too. And SOP's gone. But now we've got these PMCs that are basically mobsters. Just thugs in uniform. Yeah, not a pretty picture. What's up? No? Did you need anything else? No, guess not. Just wanted to hear the sound of your voice. Oh, save it for your wife, Raiden. Doctor, you have anything more on these cyborgs? Only what we went over in your briefing, if you had been paying attention. Standard military-grade cyborgs. MCFC integrated carbon nanotube muscle fibers. Impressive response time and power yields when focused correctly. Most will likely possess extrasensory skills as well. Infrared vision is almost standard these days. They can function without breathing for short periods of time. Okay, okay. Nothing I didn't already know. Not all cyborgs you face will be the same, of course. You may notice a range of different capabilities. It all depends on the manufacturer. Muscle fiber and neurotransmission technology is advancing all the time. Of course, you have the very latest science has to offer. A typical cyborg is no match for your equipment. If you do say so yourself. <laughs> no, I realize combat is about more than the equipment. Situational awareness, predictive ability, nerves. One must determine a course of attack or defense and execute on a moment's notice. Reaction time is key. Cyborg enhancements do not change that. Agreed. Hey, Doc, I'm curious. Can I recharge off any cyborg? Even a non-military unit? Not that I ever would, of course. A pedestrian cyborg? I very much doubt you will encounter any of those on this op. Besides... Against the rules of engagement, I know. Like I said, just curious. Hmm. In theory, then. No, I would doubt very much that you could. Even from those that opted for complete body replacements due to injury or illness, you know. Though I have heard of some very wealthy clients who wanted to fight the effects of aging. Doctor? Hmm? Ah, yes, your question. No, extracting MCFCs from pedestrian cyborgs is unlikely. Most non-military enhancements use polymer muscle fiber that is a generation behind yours. Carbon nanotube would be a bit much for anyone who wished to lead a normal life, you know. And polymer systems can be powered by rechargeable electric batteries. Organic muscle fiber which allows extraction of nutrients from the bloodstream does exist, but it requires artificial blood for sufficient power output. This so-called white blood requires regular dialysis and was mostly phased out once cyborg technology became mainstream. True, some use cultivated muscle tissue to take nourishment from the body's natural bloodstream. But such systems are more regenerative medicine than cyborg technology. I'm sure you'll agree. Of course, natural musculature or no, if the body is equipped with a ceramic bone structure... Can't get energy from non-military cyborgs. Got it. Well, uh, one moment. I have more... Thanks, Doc. <clears throat> so, as I was saying, there are many differences between pedestrian and military cyborgs. Ugh, you're still on about this. Uh, now, first and foremost, military cyborgs are generally full-body conversions. You mean as opposed to partials? Yes, as opposed to just grafting on an arm or leg where a myoelectric prosthesis would suffice. As I have said, for the general public, these full-body replacements are quite rare. Quite rare. Only in cases of extreme injury or illness, generally. Perhaps a few eccentrics who wish to live longer. In any case, most pedestrian cyborgs are no more than an artificial limb or two. We call these partials. Doctor, I know. I just said that. Partials enhancements are not designed to meet the rigors of military use. 
A pair of synthetic arms attached to an organic body cannot match the power of those on a full cyborg. Total body conversions also armor the entire soldier against stray ordnance and minor injury. This is why wounded contractors most often opt for the works rather than simply replacing the lost limb. I hear it's why most of Maverick cyborgs had it done, anyway. Of course, there is the rather, uh, dramatic change in appearance to consider. Civilian life as a cyborg can be, well, complicated, as I'm sure you can attest. But for the field, man and metal, capability beyond the natural human body, it has a functional beauty. Beauty or beast? <laughs> Both lie in the eye of the beholder, which brings us to the senses. Machine implants can also restore lost vision and hearing, and with added sensitivity, as you know. Such options have become standard in most military conversion packages, along with pain suppression and dampening less mm, useful emotions, similar to how SOP operated. Yeah, no matter how hard I'm hit, it doesn't really hurt. Of course, everything has its limits. Do not let your high threshold for pain make you reckless. Understood. Doctor, about my pain threshold. It doesn't hurt exactly, but I can still feel it. It's not painful, but it's still pain. It's hard to explain. Well, your nervous system is still fully intact, of course. It would be dangerous for you to be entirely unaware of your body taking damage. Instead, your nerves are controlled such that pain is no longer so... unpleasant. How do you mean? Take epinephrine, for example, or adrenaline, as you might know it. This hormone makes it harder to feel pain, yes? Your implants work using a similar method. Yet, for all we now understand of the nature of pain, much of it remains a mystery. How so? Well, why do we feel pain? Evolutionarily speaking, of course, to signal external injury or internal sickness. If the body is threatened, pain notifies the brain so it can take steps to ensure survival. In other words, pain has a clear and logical purpose. But, in certain cases, pain can drive more unconstructive behavior. In situations where fight and flight are both still options, one might simply break down crying or drop to the ground and begin writhing about. This would appear only to diminish one's chance of survival, not increase it, yes? Maybe there's some other factor at play. Well, the most common theory would link pain with the societal nature of humanity. If no friends are close by, then experiencing pain might indeed reduce your likelihood of survival. But if allies are near, these expressions of pain serve as a plea for help. Thus, you are more likely to live. Fear of pain might also discourage one from entering a dangerous situation in the first place. Whatever the reasons, the data clearly shows that survival rates rise directly with sensitivity to pain. The converse is also proven. Those less able to feel or express pain have a lesser chance of survival. So, mankind has evolved as a social animal. And in the process, pain has become more pronounced, more visceral. <laughs> a little pain never hurt anyone, huh? But if pain is there to ensure survival, well, what's that say about the future for us cyborgs? As a transhumanist, I do not believe all evolution must follow the exact method Darwin posited. Cyborg technology is still survival of the fittest, after all. Just in a new form. You should be proud of what your body has become. It is the culmination of great achievements in science. Me? I had nothing to do with it. The credit's all yours. <laughs> well, yes. I should be proud as well. Doctor, about my fuel cells, the electrolytes. Do all military cyborgs use the same type? I'm not gonna run across anyone, you know, incompatible with me, am I? An excellent question. Your fuel cells, like any other, operate much in the same way as a typical battery. They do not need replacing after a single use, of course, and they do not require recharging. They do, however, require a fuel source. That much I know already. Yes, that. There are several different types of fuel cells. Phosphoric acid, MCFC, molten carbonate like yours, solid oxide, and so forth. Each type can be further divided into classes, each which runs on its own electrolyte material. 
However, all current military cyborg MCFCs run on the same one electrolyte. That's good news. Why all the same electrolyte, you ask? The answer lies in the catalyst that helped make up your carbon nanotube musculature. It was breakthroughs in researching these catalysts and CNT manufacturing that enabled large-scale production. Breakthroughs that happened after all the data the Patriots were covering up finally leaked. It could not have happened without your help, Raiden. Science owes you a great debt. And I do as well. Working on your body has been quite... educational. <laughs> <sighs> Check your destination on the Soliton radar. What's up? Okay, save complete. Don't let your guard down, okay? Raiden, head for the oil refinery. Raiden, if you ever get lost, by using you... Raiden, if you ever bite you... Stay vigilant, right? Raiden. Raiden, if you ever get lost, use augment mode to check your next objective. By using augment mode, you can see enemy positions and the direction in which you should head. Useful for when you cannot find your objective on the Solitone radar. 